The Real McCoys, starring Walter Brennan, created by Irving Pincus. Want you to meet the family known as the Real McCoys. That's Grandpappy Amos, the head of the clan. He roars like a lion, but he's gentle as a lamb. And now here's Luke, who beams with joy since he may hate Mrs. McCoy. From West Virginia they came to stay in sunny California. Oh, Grandpappy Amos and the girls and the boys of the family known as the Real McCoys. Look here. Well, them's the cops in the car, I wore water your wedding. And they're my coveralls. And my work shirt. And they hip boots. You can't give these away, never. Oh, if everybody was like you and Luke, there wouldn't be no rummage to sell. Well, there ain't no need for a rummage sale anyway, with what they're charging to get into that dance. It's five dollars a ticket. That's a fine howdy do. My clothes get into the dance free, and I ain't got money enough to go. <laughs> Hello. Oh, hello. I'm collecting for the rummage sale. Oh, won't you come in? <laughs> Thank you. I need Doc Weiler. He's Doc Weiler? Well, you must be Ed's extra sister he's always talking about. The one and only. Oh, well, I'm Kate McCoy. It sure is an honor to meet a famous actress like you. Uh, likewise, I'm sure. <laughs> Ed thought it might add a little glamour if I collected the old clothes. And since I'm on a layoff, uh, between engagements, why shouldn't I help the Grange out? Oh, well, we don't have an awful lot to give you, but what we do have, you're welcome to. What do you mean we ain't got an awful lot? But, Grandpa, you oh, just... Oh, I want you to meet my grandson. This is Luke McCoy. How do you do? Oh, pleased to meet you, ma'am. You know, I'm Amos McCoy, bachelor at large. <laughs> welcome to the McCoy Ranch, Miss Dockwater. It is me, isn't it? Well, yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> well, like I was just saying, we were just filling up this old blanket here for things for the rummage sale. <laughs> what? Put your things right on top of the pile there, Luke. Yeah, but, Grandpa, boy, when you're given to help someone else, you just can't think of yourself. Isn't that right, Kate? It is now. <laughs> I must say, this is very big of you. Oh, well, would you help me out to the car with these things, Mr. McCoy? I'd be glad to. Oh, thank you so much. I'm very, very happy to have met you, I'm sure. Nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, nice to meet you. Oh, yes, and thank you so very much for all this uh, stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't thank us. Thank Grandpa. Bye. 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 I never thought I'd meet Ed's famous sister. <laughs> you should have told me a lot about you. How much? Well, about all them operatics and them conventions you start in. Oh, well, you know, Eddie's always exaggerating, just a little. Yeah, but when you come into that dance Saturday night, I tell you, them people's going to think they're seeing a double feature. <laughs> seeing a famous star like you. Well, I don't believe in taking advantage of one's fame. I want to be treated just like one of you common people. <laughs> oh, are you going to the dance, Mr. McCoy? Uh, no. Important money matters is keeping me away. Money matters? <laughs> Well, I'm, uh, I'm sorry to hear about that, because I don't have a date yet. And Ed put aside two tickets for me. Well, <laughs> now that you put it that way, I can forget the money matters. Me and you go to the dance. All righty. I'll pick you up at eight sharp. Now, don't be late. We don't want to miss none of the fun. I'll be ready. I can get dressed in less than a course and a half of... <laughs> I'll be ready. <laughs> oh, uh, what do we do about dinner? You eat early, and so will I. Swell. Oh, don't forget to send Ed a check for ten dollars. Ten dollars? What for? For the tickets to the dance. Bye, Ed. Why, darling, you giving us the tickets? You done got a date with me on a false pretender. Actresses, you all done them all gold diggers. <laughs> I wouldn't take you now if I had the money. Oh, Flora. Flora. George, going shopping. Give these old clothes to the Grange Rummage Collector when he comes. Flora. Well, <laughs> there's her old skirt and her old blouse and her old dress and... And my good shirt, my good pants, and my new suit. <laughs> oh, no, she don't. She ain't giving these away. Yeah, who is it? The rummage collector for the Grange. 
Well, you ain't getting any of my stuff. Hello. <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, I, uh... I said hello. That's what I was trying to think of. Hello. <laughs> Won't you come in? Well, thank you so much. I mean, Doc Weiler. Are you Mr. Beck Michael? Me? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's me. Well, I have your name on my list. I'm supposed to collect some old clothes. Oh, my sister Flora and often left her clothes here. Uh, I mean, she had some on, naturally. <laughs> Eve Duckweiler, Ed's actress sister. In the flash. <laughs> Just think of that. Are those the clothes for the rummage sale? Yeah, yeah. And uh, if they're not good enough, I get better ones in my closet. <laughs> <laughs> Say, you like that tie? Well, sure. It's yours. <laughs> Those will fit the bill perfectly. Oh, uh, allow me to tie it. Oh, thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Oh, see, you ain't going yet. You can't. Well, uh, what do you got on your mind, honey? <laughs> well, uh, I know I ain't got a chance. After all, you're a glamorous actress. <laughs> but I was just wondering about the dance Saturday night. Oh, it should be a ball. Yeah, and I was just wondering if you and me... Oh, I'm terribly sorry, but I already made previous engagements. Oh, forgive me. I should have known better. Oh, you are a doll. <laughs> well, I gotta run now. Uh, uh, thanks for dropping by. Toodaloo. Goodbye. Angel face. <laughs> Checkerboard, I, I forgot it was Tuesday night. Ah, uh, forget about the checkerboard, Amish. I don't feel like playing checkers tonight. What's the matter, George? You sick? Heart sick. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Oh, just sick. What from? The usual a woman. <laughs> Ain't it always? I get myself trapped every time I, I leave my charm, get away from me. What kind of a female are you trapped with this time? Well, she's sort of a, a gold digger type. The kind of woman is yours. Wonderful. Young, beautiful, innocent, an angel. Well, how did you happen to meet her? Oh, she came around the house looking for old clothes. Oh, the poor thing. No, no, it wasn't poor like that, Amos. She was collecting for the Green Drummage sale. What was this young girl's name? Her name, her name is Eve. Eve Dockweiler. Eve Dockweiler? Well, you must have met the daughter. I met the mother. <laughs> to think Ed would have assisted like that. Now, when you refer to young and beautiful, are you still refer to Ed Dockweiler's sister? Amos, when he walked out of my house, carrying them old clothes, it wasn't old clothes she was carrying. It was my heart. <laughs> well, I'll be dogged. I invited her to the Grange dance, but I was just too late. Somebody else beat me to it. Well, hmm. No wonder you feel so bad losing a chance to go to that dance with that young, beautiful girl. <laughs> Even if the tickets is five dollars a piece. I wouldn't care if there was a hundred. George, I'm the best friend you got, and you're my best friend either, right? Yeah, that's right. And if I wanted something you had real bad and I asked you for it, you'd give it to me, wouldn't you? Well, I don't know, Amos. Oh, of course you would. <laughs> Just like I'm going to give you your heart's desire. You want to take Eve to the dance Saturday night? Well, she's all you and <laughs> Amos, you mean you're the one that's the date with it? Yep, and because of the way you feel about it, I'm giving her up to you. <laughs> but, but there's just one little thing, George. You won't have to buy them tickets. <laughs> Amos, this is wonderful. You're my best friend. I can never thank you enough. I'll, 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 I'll... No. No, it's no use. Thanks. Just the same, Amos, but you better take her to the dance. Well, now, hold on, George. You made a deal with me. No, no, it's no use, Amos. It's, it won't work. It has to. Uh, Amos, <laughs> I've seen you in action. When you flash that smile and blink them eyes and 
pour all that creamy talk all over a woman, she hasn't got a chance, but with me, uh, I never know what to say. I just choke up, and with a glamorous woman like Eve Duckweiler, I'd be that much worse. It's just a waste of ten dollars. You no, know, it ain't, George, I promise you. Because I'm going to do something no McCoy has ever done for an outsider before. Yeah? What? I'm going to reveal the McCoy secrets of romancing and charming the opposite sex. <laughs> you mean there's a trick to it? George, when I get through learning you and you walk down the street, every mother's going to lock her daughter in the house and go chasing after you. Oh. <laughs> Start teaching English. <laughs> Why, Mr. McMichael, what a pleasant surprise. Won't you come in? Thanks. I come over to tell you about Amos McCoy. Amos McCoy? What about him? Now, George, after he says, what about him? Look at it as if you was going to answer it, then sudden look away. <laughs> now look around the room as if it was the most elegant barn you ever seen. With milking machines, French windows, and air conditioning by the fertilizer sacks. <laughs> Turn around and squint at it, and keep squinting. Just you ask her what you're looking at. <laughs> then remember what I told you to say. Oh, what are you looking at? I'd like to oil paint you just as you're standing there. <laughs> you paint? Well, now remember, act humble. Well, I try. <laughs> I enjoy expressing myself in oils. <laughs> well, what do you know? Now you get a good one. Just keep on with what I told you. Almost forgot. <laughs> uh, I mean about Amos. Uh, he's done with the virus. Won't be up until after the dance. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, uh, won't you sit down? Uh, no, thanks. I'd like to stop and visit a while, but uh, you see, the, the Citizens Committee is waiting to see me. Yeah, there's some talk of running me as a reform candidate against the machine. You're clowning. No, no, no. You see, the committee figures the citizens would trust a man with, uh, well, uh, a little money. Uh, kind of like Rockefeller. Yeah, they're the best kind. Go <laughs> now. i see you around sometime. If you've done everything I told you, she'll call you back. Mr. McMichael. Don't look back, George. Whatever you do, don't look back. Mr. McMichael. Georgie. Now that Amos can't take me to the dance, I won't have a partner. I suppose. Well, you were asking me about it this morning. Does your offer still hold good? Very well. You got yourself a date, Miss Stockweiler. <laughs> uh... Georgie. This is a test of fire, George. Don't weaken whatever you do. Do you really have to go? Well, you gotta go. You only got lessons up to here. You heard what you said. I mean, you heard what I said. I gotta go. Ta-ta. <laughs> Too bad the shin leg has to bust up so early, but that don't need to stop us. Uh, once again around the floor, Cinderella. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're as light in your feet as foot who will Oh, you're pulling my leg. Uh, uh, oh, excuse. Uh, I must have set in your socks. <laughs> <laughs> you're a devil. <laughs> Shall we have a little fresh air? All righty. <laughs> <laughs> Night blooming jasmine. It's too much. Tell me, do you grow flowers on your ranch, Georgie? Oh, yeah, yeah. And corn, tomatoes, lettuce, uh, oranges, grapefruit, uh, not to mention avocados and cattle and pigs. Oh, it sounds like quite a spring. Yeah, and it's all free and clear. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Every square foot of it. Oh, you are a doll. Georgie, you are the cutest thing I have ever run into. Oh, uh, go on. <laughs> you know, uh, we've been together every night since we first met. That's right. You could almost say we were practically going steady. 
Well, I'm a lucky man. You, um, you want to press your luck a little, Georgie? What's that? Well, when a gentleman finds a lady's company agreeable, he usually has something permanent in mind. Permanent? Oh? Say something, Georgie. Once again, we're on the floor. Cinderella. <laughs> Is she in love with you? She's mad about me. <laughs> James, how could she help but be with all those beautiful words of yours pouring out of my throat? <laughs> George, what have I done here? You've made me the happiest man in the world, Amos. I want you to make me up a proposal speech, one that'll knock her right off her feet. Oh, for that you'd need a bulldozer. <laughs> Will you be serious? This is the most important step in my life. Yeah. All right, George, all right. But I gotta have a little time. I tell you, you come back just before your date and I'll have the right thing figured out for you to see. Amos, thank you, thank you. My cup runneth over, Amos. You made it all possible for Evie and me. Yeah, I know I'm responsible, George, but it's like you say, it's a big step and I just want to make sure you don't trip. <laughs> Hello, Mr. McCoy. <laughs> you. Oh, they're lovely. Thank you so much. Come in. Thank you. My, I'm so happy to see you up and around again. Well, sure am I. You know, I was kind of worried about not being able to get over here and say goodbye to you before you left town. Well, that's very nice of you. But I may not leave town. I may just decide to settle here, uh, permanently. You don't mean it. Settle here? Yes, I, uh... I might just retire from showbiz and hang up my fans. I mean, uh, uh, get rid of all the fans who sent all those fan letters. <laughs> What's that for? Well, I was just wondering how a famous actress would like living in a little town like this where everybody knows everything about everybody else and, and who their friends is and how much money they say they got and how much money they really got. <laughs> Well, I suppose all little bergs are the same. <laughs> but uh, why don't you sit down and I'll get a vase for these. Well, thank you. <laughs> you know, speaking about how things get around, somebody was telling me about a man who's supposed to be very influential around these parts. Well, who's that? Oh, you know how you hear things and then it leaves you right away. <laughs> why can't I think? He has a short first name. Uh, George? <laughs> yes, that's it. George. <laughs> George McMichael. Yeah. yeah. Sure, I know him. He's my neighbor. What did he say about him? Well, they said about uh, how well fixed he is and, uh, and the farm and all that money. They did, huh? <laughs> well, that's the way people talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't it true? What's that? <laughs> about George and the farm and, and, and the money he has. Oh, that George McMichael. <laughs> then he hasn't got any money. Well, somehow he always manages to make them big mortgage payments. <laughs> what about all that livestock of his? Well, <laughs> he got a cow and a sick pig. But to hear him tell about it, you'd think he had a whole herd. <laughs> How that man can talk, especially when it comes to women. You see, by the time he gets through bragging about his oil pitcher painting and being a big success, I tell you, he's a caution. How and a sick pig. And after a woman swallows all that, that's when he gives him that Las Vegas flim flam. Las Vegas? Yeah. And now, like, supposing he was coming over here to see you, see, he, he'd say, well, he'd flop down on one knee and he'd say, he'd say, like, like he say, like this, he, Evie, darling, just looking at you, it sends an excitement, a wildfire, just a racing through me from top to bottom. I just can't wait no longer. I want you to meet me at the plane, and we'll go to Las Vegas and get married. Uh, it's just pitiful. What's pitiful about it? <laughs> he never shows up! <laughs> I, I don't get it. What's the matter with the man? Well, ain't nothing the matter. Underneath, George, he's the finest man you ever could meet. And if a woman really loved him and was willing to work with him, that is, hard and long, why, together they could make something out of that farm. That is, if the woman really loved him. <laughs> well, I gotta be going now. Yeah. 
It's nice to know that you might settle down here. <laughs> Goodbye, Evie. Nice talking to you. <laughs> Getting awful late. They should have hid from by now. Well, Grandpa, maybe they really did go to Las Vegas and get married. Oh, hogwash. Not the way George proposed to her. Well, how do you know what George said, Grandpa? Well, I sort of helped him with his proposal speech. <laughs> I sort of prepared Evie for two. <laughs> Oh, George? <laughs> it's George. <laughs> hey, where is that, George? What? No. He's in Las Vegas. <laughs> well, you see, Grandpa, maybe he was wrong about Eve Doc Weiler. Offer oh, him and Eve our congratulations, Grandpa. Go on. <laughs> George. Well, now that you went and done it. Us McCoys want to offer congratulations to you and Evie. She ain't there. <laughs> when I got to the airport, there was a wire from her saying she'd meet me in Las Vegas. And when I got to Las Vegas, there was another wire. All it said was, ha ha. <laughs> what does that mean, Amos? Well, it means, come on home. The checky board is waiting. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.